a good day and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about a spread operator in GoLet programming language and how we can use it with our slices. So let's jump in and take a look. We're going to be looking at the spread operator and honestly if you look for spread operator in the Google GoLang specification you're not going to see it say spread operator but if you look online that's what everyone seems to be calling it and once you see it Oh, it's used you'll I think you'll agree also that those spread is a good name for it so let's start um, by looking at the code uh, let me start this again I don't know why my code editor did not come up um, hmm, interesting interesting um, bam, let's try this again yet again um, all right there we go uh, don't know what was happening there but I quit it and started over so I'm starting with the code that we had from the previous section and I'm going to erase a few things so I really don't want this function right now and a lot of this code I'm going to kind of um, erase because um, I don't um, well let's let's just start out from scratch essentially and uh, we'll rewrite whatever we want so okay keep it easier and what we're doing now is understanding it, the spread operator. Okay, and that's the tree ellipsis, but you'll see in a minute. So let, let's do this. Let's imagine, uh, nope. let's imagine that um, we had um, a variadic function and um, function, well, let's start off with function print numbers and let's say add some numbers a b c d are ints that i wanted to print right so fmt that print line and of course we can do a b c d right and we know that in order to call this function print numbers i'll have to call it with some numbers let's say one five seven and nine okay and this works just fine so if I run this and I say go run main uh, is exactly what you would expect to see so let's make it a little bit more interesting um, all right all right so the I would call my function with these four individual integer parameter but the minute you see something like this you're probably thinking oh I know a variadic function if there's only four numbers alone and they all of the same type, I could turn this into a variadic function basically by having a variadic parameter. So I'm going to say this. I just have um, a parameter called A that's variadic. And, you know, it's still going to be called that way. And now this be like a slice slash array. So I can just do this instead. Uh, so let me save myself some typing here and cheat a little bit. And so I know that it's four parameter. Now this is not how you'd want to code it at runtime where you hard code indexes because if somebody, for example, passed one less parameter at runtime, you're going to have a problem here. But for now, this is going to work just fine. Okay. What we might decide to do is to write this a little better by doing something like, like this, putting it in a for loop to so say for I gets the value zero. So long as i is less than the length of a, whatever however a is, I want to increment i, and then um, I can do, you know, index into this parameter a. So this is much better, and this sort of insulates you from if the number of parameters change. So for example, uh, let's put 23 over there. And so now, um, once that's saved, I can run this, and it works just fine. So my function is no variadic, taking a number of um, integers. But what if those integers that I'm calling here, what if those were happen to be in a slice, for example? So what if I had, um, you know, uh, var s0 is equals to a slice of integer, and those were the integers. No. It seems that, uh, well, the way I can call this function is to say s0, 0, 0, s0 of 1, 
F0 of 2, F0 of 3, and of course S0 of 4 because I have uh, five numbers now. And so this works and I get the same result. But look at this. I'm, I, I want to pass these elements of my slice to this function in this order and look at how I have to index it and write it out. Wouldn't it be nice if, since I have a variadic function, if there was some shortcut to be able to do this? And so there is. When you have a slice and you want to pass that slice to a variadic function, I cannot simply say this because notice this is a slice and the type of it is slice int. And this is just says a variable number of integer parameters, which is very, very different. The two things are very different. This is not slice. You might be able to take the length of this parameter a, but that's only because it gets treated like a slice slash array to say, well, okay, it represents a number of values, but these are actually individual parameters. As you can remember, we were calling this function only a few minutes ago. We were simply calling it as print numbers, and we were calling it with, you know, some numbers like that. Those are individual integer parameters to this function. So this slice doesn't work. That's a different parameter. So this works though, in which we use this ellipsis after the name of the slice, uh, the variable um, name of the slice, and it says spread this out. Essentially, do the exact same thing as, uh, well, this actually means the same thing as if you had said print numbers and S0, 0, uh, S0, you know, 1, and then all the way through to S0, so S0, length of S0, minus 1. So that's what it means, because in this example, length of S0 would be 5, minus 1 is 4. So everything in this square bracket here is like four. So that, that there means just keep going da, 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 and so on and so on, right? That's what I mean by so on. And here it means spread, you know, spread this out or expand, right? And so people refer to the spread operator. And so now you can see it so I don't have any er errors in my code. And if I run it, I get the same result. And notice if I increase the slice here with 101, it also works just as fine um, as if I passed um, those individual number, numbers to a variadic function. And I can certainly just copy this out, and I'm going to call the same function, print numbers, and I'll paste it here. And you'll see those numbers printed out twice. So let me see, um, print uh, FMT print line second call print numbers right and so you should see if I wait to this to save and I run it you can see that I get the same results here and the same results here and so these two things are the same pass in a slice that is expanded or spread out is the same as if you were to pass this individually and it pass them in the exact same order. Hence why I say it's the same as slice of zero, slice of one, da 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 da, through the last element of that slice. So that is the spread operator. And you might wonder like, okay, um, so maybe you see the benefit of this. You may think, well, okay, if I have a function that takes some numbers and um, if I so happen to have a slice, you know, this might this come in handy. So for your assignment, I would like you to write a function. So complete this function, stats number or number stats. All right? And it's a variadic function. And what it does is it prints out a few things to do. So let's say to do one print sum of 
of numbers passed here. They added to do to print average of number. Ah. Uh, there we go. Right? That to do three is to print the smallest number. print the largest number. So that's your to do and I know we didn't cover a lot of things but if you just look back in some of our so here's a for loop example of a for loop you've seen a if statement before so um, see if you can figure out how to do that we didn't quite cover if so this is a little bit of stretch exercise um, So this is sort of like a stretch exercise just to get you to really play with um, the spread operator. And of course, um, the function will be called number stats and you call it with the spread operator like that. And so I want you to try it, try and change the number, the number of numbers, <laughs> the length of the slice and just get comfortable with using slices. Okay, so you need two things to be able to complete this exercise. Um, and that is, uh, the first two can be done very easily with everything you see on the screen here. To do the last one, you need to stretch a little bit and look at the if statement you should see in some of our previous example. Um, you should, we, we use the if statement. And should, that should give you some idea of how to complete this part of the exercise. So even though we didn't cover if statement, just because you kind of showed it in the previous thing and I want you to really play with this, um, do that. Um, the code, when I check it in, it's going to have a stub for a stub direct, sub directory here um, for this exercise. So it's going to be called stub. And then there's going to be also a solution directory with the solution completed. And so um, try it first with the stub and then after you either get it working or if you want some help, then go take a look at my solution. Remember with code, um, there's always more than one way to do something. So uh, even if I do it one way, it doesn't mean that that's the only way of doing it. All right. Thanks for your time. Um, please click the subscribe button below and tell your friends, tell your family, tell everyone to come and learn Go or at least check it out and send them here. In the meantime, subscribe, spread the word, leave feedback, and try, try this out. Take care. Thanks for your time. Bye.